Hi, pre-K kids. Because it's Earth Day, I wanted to, in addition to talk about composting, I wanted to talk about garbage. We generate a lot of garbage in America. And do any of you know where your garbage goes? Well, I know you may have just said in the trash can. But once you put it in the trash can and take it out for the garbage man to pick up, where does that garbage truck take all of our garbage? Well, here in Washington, they load our garbage onto railroad cars and haul it to the other side of the mountains. And then they dig a great big hole in the earth where there's no houses or anything around. They dump the garbage in there and make one big, huge compost pile. But unfortunately, a lot of the things that we throw away in the trash, like plastic, doesn't decompose very fast. It takes years and years and years for plastic to decompose. That's why at school, that's why we have you bring your own water bottle with water in it, rather than plastic water bottles that you just throw the plastic away. That's one way you can help reduce the amount of garbage that you make. And when you bring your food in your bento lunch boxes, you don't have a, d a lot of packaging. It's all fresh food in your lunch box. So there's not a lot of packaging and garbage that needs to be thrown away. But inevitably we have to, to make some garbage. We can recycle some things, we can compost some things, but ultimately we have to send some trash to the landfill. So we're going to read a book today a science book that talks about where does the garbage go. It's written by Paul Showers and illustrated by Randy Chunin. And you can see they're recycling some bottles and cans and newspapers, but ultimately some trash has to go into the garbage truck. So stay tuned and we'll read about where does your garbage go. Where does the garbage go? We're going to read this science book and find out more about garbage. In our school, we are learning about garbage. Last week, our teacher told us about the way things used to be and what we can do to create less garbage and help out our environment. She got us thinking, where does garbage come from? And where does it go? Think about all the things that you throw into the garbage. She said there was a time when people who wanted to get rid of something just threw it into the garbage can. They threw away old orange peels, eggshells, and the food they didn't eat. They also threw away things like empty bottles and cans, cardboard boxes, and newspapers. And this doggie's sitting there thinking, mmm, I would have eaten that. If kept separate, a lot of food that is thrown away could be turned into compost, which is helpful for growing plants. Old bottles and newspapers could be recycled and made into new materials. But when these things are all mixed together, it just becomes garbage. Once a week, the garbage was collected in trucks and taken out to the dump. In the dump, there were piles of garbage everywhere and all kinds of trash. Old tires, broken bottles, tin cans, old newspapers, and broken chairs and sofas. In summer, the food that was thrown out rotted and made a terrible stink. Rats came to eat it, millions of flies buzzed around, and the dump was a great big mess. At one time, New York City used the ocean for its dump. It loaded its waste on flat boats and called flat boats called barges. Tugboats pulled the barges out to sea and the waste was just dumped overboard. Most of the trash sank, but some of it floated. I don't think the fish really liked all that stinky garbage. Often it floated right back to the beaches where people were swimming. Ugh!
New York City doesn't throw its waste in the ocean anymore. It has a special kind of dump called a landfill. Other cities have landfills too. Our town has one and our class went out and looked at it. A landfill is a busy place. It's surely not a place for a picnic and phew, it really smells. Trucks lo bring loads of waste from the city and dump it into big piles. Bulldozers with scrapers spread out the waste. And then compactors with spikes on their wheels move back and forth over the waste until it is all mashed and piled up. After that, trucks bring loads of soil. The bulldozers and compactors spread the soil over the waste. The soil covers up everything. It keeps out the rats and the flies. Then the landfill is ready for more waste. Then comes more soil to cover it up. And then more waste, more soil, layer after layer. A landfill keeps piling up and it gets to be a mountain. Here you can see the layers of the landfill. Daily waste, daily covering of soil, and then they have to put a dirt cap over each layer. And you keep piling it up until you can't get it any higher. When the last layer of soil is spread on top of a landfill, grass and trees are planted on it, and the landfill could become a park or a playground. Then the city has to find a new place to take its garbage. Garbage just never stops piling up. You might be asking, what is in our landfills? Well, about 30% of it is food and yard waste. You could compost this. 9% is metal or cans, 5% is glass, 15% is newspapers and magazines, and 18% is plastic, and 11% is leather, rubber, and fabric. And then there's just a bunch of other stuff, about 12%. So there's a lot of different things that go into the landfills. Some cities try to get rid of their waste by burning it. They build big furnaces called incinerators and burn garbage and trash in them. The heat is used to warm stores and offices. It is also used to make electricity. So trucks bring garbage in, it goes into the incinerator, it's fed and it burns, and then the gases have to be cleaned and filtered before they can go out the stack. When incinerators burn our trash, they don't really get rid of everything. There is leftover ash that still has to go to a landfill. And sometimes this ash is toxic or harmful. And sometimes the smoke from the incinerator pollutes the air with harmful gases. So it's not the best way to get rid of garbage. Today, cities are having a hard time finding places for new landfills. Waste keeps piling up. People keep throwing things away. They throw away too many things. Some of the things they throw away could be used over and over again. Each person in the U.S. creates about four pounds of trash every day. So your dad would make four pounds of trash, you, your mom and you make four pounds of trash, and that's a lot. One way cities make less garbage is by recycling. Recycling means making trash into something new instead of throwing it away. Almost half the trash we throw away could be recycled. Look for this symbol on glass, paper, metal, and plastic containers to determine if it can be recycled or not. My family tries to recycle as much as we can. We turn our old fruits and vegetables and grass clippings into compost for our yards. We keep garbage like glass bottles, aluminum cans, newspaper, and foil separate from the food waste. When we can put the cans and bottles at the curb, we pile old newspapers besides them. We flatten out our cardboard boxes and pile them next to the newspapers to be picked up for recycling each week. 
when the garbage truck comes, it picks up only the garbage and takes it out to the landfill. Other trucks come for the bottles and cans and newspapers that can be recycled. Those things don't go into the landfill anymore. Our city sells them to factories and mills for recycling. Paper mills chop up old newspapers and turn them back into new paper. The paper is shredded, it's washed and bleached, and then it turns into new paper. Aluminum factories take aluminum cans and foil and melt them to make new cans and new rolls of foil. They go into a hot furnace where it's melted and it comes out molten and then they can pour this molten aluminum into new molds for new cans. Glass bottles are ground up and melted to make new glass bottles and jars, kind of like the aluminum. It's crushed, it's put into a hot furnace, it's cooled off, and then it makes liquid glass that's poured in, into molds. Oops, over here. And then even plastic can be recycled, the same thing. Plastic factories chop it up and turn it into things like flower pots and park benches. They can turn up chopped plastic into just about anything. What are we doing to help the environment? We are separating our trash and recycling. We put our food scraps into the compost pile. I made a toy for my dog out of my old socks. My family gives all of our old clothes to the thrift store. My mom started a recycling program for paper. I carry a lunchbox instead of a bag that I throw away every day. We carry reusable bags to the store so we don't need to take the plastic ones. We'd only throw away. Our teacher says recycling is a good start, but we must do more. We must stop making so much waste. We must stop throwing so many things away. We need to find ways to use things over and over again. That's what we have done at home. We used to bring our groceries home in paper and plastic bags. When we emptied the bags, we just threw them into the garbage can. When we did that, we were just making more waste pile up at the landfill. But we have stopped doing that. Now we use reusable bags. They hang on the kitchen doorknob, and when we go to the supermarket, we take our reusable bags and put our groceries in them instead. So we don't have to get plastic bags at the store. Our reusable bags are strong and hold a lot of groceries. We use them over and over again. So there you have it. You've learned all about garbage. Think about ways that you can help reduce the amount of waste at your house and put those things into action with the help of your parents. See ya!